What's up, guys? It's Wally, and it's Friday, which means we're going to be listening to another song by Dimash. And when I was looking through the comment section of both Agni Pietra and Ikenai Day, I saw that a lot of people were saying, since I was such a big fan of Dimash's lower register, that the next song I should be listening to is Elamor and T. So that's the one we're going to be listening to, and I'm excited to get into it, so we will. But before we do, as always, if you guys are new here just haven't yet, please make sure to go down and hit the subscribe button. If you guys do enjoy the video, please make sure to drop a like, too. But let's get into the song. I really like that cape, by the way. I gotta say, just just quickly, I, I don't know what it is. I, first of all, everyone talking about how, like, if I really enjoyed his lower register, I'd love this song. You guys are all absolutely right. Absolutely right. Because, wow, dude, again, him and his lower register are so incredible. Like, I don't know how he has that, like, quality to his voice. But, because, like, again, from the beginning of this song when he started singing to, like, this part right here... It's like, I know he's staying in, like, the same kind of, like, octave, same, like, range down there, but it's, like, two, like, different voices. Like, one was definitely, like, I guess more full and, like, more heavy, whereas the other one was, I don't even know the word to really, like, describe it. But, like, you can tell they were, like, just two different feels to them, but they were both so incredible. And, again, just so, he's so pitch perfect and just that quality to his voice when he's in that lower register is just extremely difficult to find. And I love the like operatic kind of feel to this. And again, like I said in the beginning, it's a dope looking cape. I love that. It looks incredible. It really does kind of give me, and I think it might just be because of the cape, but kind of like Phantom of the Opera vibes, you know what I mean? So I, I think that's really cool. Uh, again, that might just be a, a really ridiculous comparison, but again, the cape um, and the operatic voice, you know? So. Uh, it just sounds, it sounds really incredible. This performance is, is really, really cool. Um, uh, I'm just excited to see where it goes from here. Cause again, if he stays in this low range, this entire song, I think that's going to be really cool, but it's Dimash. I, I know he's going to switch things up, you know? Oh, no.
okay, I'm so sorry. I know I should have stopped when I when I was confused at, in the first place. So, which okay? So which which one's the real one? I, I'm guessing from here because now, now that I'm looking at it with the scale with the scale of it because of the like. Hold on. Okay, yeah, no, I'm 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 really really confused because like looking at like. The crowd, the rest of the stage, and everything, like, both of those look way too big to be, like, a real person. Okay, so I'm really confused. This, I, I'm sorry, I'm, like, I'm, like, trying to, like, craft theories while, while, while I'm, like, watching this. Um, so my guess is going to be that none of them are real? That they're both, like, recordings or holograms or, or something like that? Again, just because of the of this sheer scale of them up there on the stage, like it just doesn't make sense that either of them would be a real person. Um, dude, that's really really cool though, and I love the fact that like you have the contrast between the two because you have you know Dimash dressed in all black, you have Dimash dressed in all white. They're both kind of you know they're both in like that lower register, but you can tell they're both you know, a little different. So it's that's a really, really cool contrast. And I love the way that he's doing that, too. That is super cool. Um, I, I'm still confused as to why there would be two recordings, though. Um, I mean, gosh, we have more than three minutes left, so I'm sure we're going to figure it out. But um, but even so, I, I think this is really cool. The new voice that kind of entered in here, it, it, wow. And again, to have those two up there together is, is really cool. I'm just... Now really more intrigued and excited to see where this is going to go because I I have no clue. Okay, we're just going to play. We're just going to play. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I want to go back and just play that quickly. That vibrato that he has, like, in his voice right there sounds so, so amazing. Like, I, mm, I'm sorry. I just needed to listen to it one more time. And I'm sorry if I called that something wrong. I just remember back from my band days, that's what I would call what I would do on the trumpet. But that vibrato just sounds so damn good. <laughs> Dimash. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. Now it all makes sense as to why they're, they're like, why it only st started off with like the two holograms and then the third one came in. Okay. Makes a lot more sense now. I love this. This is so cool. And I got to say too, I love the fact that he has like a different, like Dimash for like each voice that he's kind of portrayed here. You know, you, you got the, you got the one dressed in all black, the one dressed in all white, the one dressed in all red, and then you got the real one up on stage. And then just the, the part that the uh, that the red one was singing, just so beautiful. Like, again, just goes to show you, Dimash doesn't necessarily need words to just really just convey those emotions, you know? 
It sounds so incredible. But I, okay, sorry. Now everything's coming together. Now it all makes sense. All that confusion I had a couple minutes ago, all cleared up now. We're good. to say like the harmonization with himself there at the end I think was really really dope because you know how many performances have we seen of Dimash where it's like man just the range that he has going from you know down there to like the middle ranges all the way up to you know those insane octaves that I could never imagine people to actually hit like it would be so cool to listen to all of them together my goodness like <sighs> And then the, the actual, like, representation of, like, each of those voices, which is really, really cool, too. Because, again, you, the symbolism there, too. Like, you have the one in all black that really had, like, the really, like, low octave, you know, that was just really lower. Uh, the, the the one in white that was just, like, a, like a step above in terms of, like, the, the octave. And then the, the one in red that was, a, that was much higher. That was really not, like, necessarily singing, but more... Um, Again, not actually singing words. That's I I don't know quite what I'm trying to say right now. I'm just so like, just mind after right now. You know, I, I guess that's the word to to call it. Um, but and then then you had actual Dimash on the stage too, and I love the fact that when he came out and started singing like himself, like with obviously the three uh, like recordings of him, like the style of the song really changed up too. Like, you still had, like, the uh, the feel of, like, the original, um, of, like, how the song actually started. But it, it kind of got, like, a little bit of, like, a, um, I don't want to say, like, a, I, I don't know how to call it. But it just kind of got that little extra bit of, like, I don't want to say funkiness to it. But, you know, that little, yeah, I can't think of the word for it. But it just was that little change in, in, in genre and that little change in the music that just was really cool and, like, each time, like, each one of them had, like, you know, the, the spotlight on them and was, like, the main one that you were focusing on, you know, the song kind of changed up to that kind of feel. And I think that was really cool. Man, this song was 
with something else, man. This song was only six and a half minutes, but I literally felt like I went on an, an insane journey right there. You know, because, again, it was just like all these different Dimashes up there trying to figure out which one was the real one, what each of them kind of represented. Like, it was just, it was crazy. It was crazy. Like, I am just, I am like out of my mind right now. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore because, like, I'm still trying to, like, grasp grasp what I just heard. Uh, that was that was insane. Oh my goodness. And now that I'm thinking about it, I do remember there was one comment that did talk about how he was harmonizing with himself. So I don't know why I was so like mind blown that he was doing that, but my goodness, that sounded so incredible. That was that was something else. And again, like I said, we've listened to so many songs by him now where it's like he goes from octave to, to octave. And it sounds so great over the course of the song. But being able to like hear him harmonize with himself, being in all those octaves again for someone who has that insane like, um, like just ability to have that type of range, being able to harmonize with himself and be able to hear all those voices together is just something else, man. That was so so beautiful. Are there any other songs? You guys, please let me know down in the comments. Are there any other songs where he like really harmonizes with himself like this? Maybe not necessarily with like you know three recordings but maybe you know not necessarily a backing track where like he's kind of harmonizing with that or or, or something else like a, maybe a loop pedal I don't, I don't even have to know but if there's another song like that where he harmonizes with, with himself I really want to hear it because after hearing this man that makes me super excited for what else he might have done but either way thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate it hope you guys enjoyed the song hope you enjoyed the video if you guys did make sure to drop a like we'll see you guys next time Thank you.